On the 6th of September, Starfield has officially launched. And you may think that the number sounds a bit off. You may be able to remember playing the game much sooner than that, and that is a beast of a topic on its own. For the regular mortal such as myself, the launch day was the day I've bravely spent over 4 hours barely scratching the surface of Starfield and the real size of its universe. The next day seemed no different and the day after that I've soon found myself waking up to and going to sleep during Starfield sessions. Now, 50 hours later, there are things that you may wanna know. Making any sort of comprehensive list stopped making sense after reading the thorough complaints of various kind. Soon enough I've realized that people who will enjoy this title will enjoy it almost immediately. Starfield is nothing like Skyrim and nothing like Fallout 4. Nothing like the most recent Bethesda titles, if you don't count these. Which was very enlightening in the first 10 hours of the game, because I've come out of both Skyrim and Fallout 4 uninterested. And not for any reason that might have popped into your head right now. And certainly not for any related issues Starfield may have at the moment. See, these two Bethesda titles have made incredible effort to leave a mark. Not following rules of other creator studios. If you love medieval combat, magic and dragons, you will probably love Skyrim even if there are a couple things you can't do. And if you enjoyed the classic post-apocalypse and the adventures often associated with it, you are likely to devote hundreds of hours into Fallout franchise. Even if these games are the most infamous for their occasional bugs, and falling straight down the rabbit hole that is Starfield, I understood this very quickly. For the first time in 8 years, Bethesda has made something new again. The one chapter in this video that won't capture everyone is that Starfield can be approached from many angles, as most deep dive RPGs. This means that some people have already seen the ending of the game, whereas I have focused myself on completing most of the main faction side quests. On top of that, there is the various skills you can unlock that will dictate the direction of your entire gameplay system. There's the decisions that you make as the main character, and then there is the inevitable fuck-ups that you will make every now and then. I think the most important thing to say about Starfield without overwhelming you with information is that this game has made unprecedented effort to create two sides of the same coin, and polishing both of them into seamless gameplay. You get to fly a spaceship. You get to engage in space battles, help strangers, rob strangers, instigate fights across multiple systems, steal ships, rob ships, and build ships. I mention this part because there is a way to get lost inside Starfield, not even realizing how open the game really is. Bethesda worked with NASA to actually get the most realistic version of our solar system. There is a lot to learn from everything new Bethesda actually did in order to rise above the labels of Skyrim, Fallout and their not so kind history. Like I stated, these games are not trying to lull you into consent. It's unapologetically strong and yes, at times admirably weak. And even though there is no shortage of people that will try to convince you otherwise, Starfield is incredibly stable and fast for what it can do. And that would be somewhat my review, which this is not, but as an opening it felt right to put out some words of candor. Now, what does 50 hours in Starfield mean? What does it do? I have a little bit of a clearer understanding of the rough circuits underneath the smooth surface. There is a metric shit ton of things that are not right and almost seem skipped over in the development. As with every RPG, there is a lot of things the devs let you do, all while they don't really want you to do. Which leaves you with a bit of aftertaste after some of the missions. Like you have ended things on bad terms. Like you could have made better choice somewhere. 
or maybe everything would pan out better value to invest in this perk instead of that one. This kind of thing is all over the game. And I don't even think you can avoid it, it just sucks sometimes. Stealth is super strange, I have made my character master at lockpicking, even though I have never even leveled up the stealth perk, because what do you know, they are in a completely different tree. Early on dealing with the novice locks, you can literally just keep cancelling the lockpicking minigame until it looks easy because the puzzles reset every time and you don't even need to use the digipick. And even though I can't see when I'm not seen or not, because that's a part of the stealth perk that I don't have, stealing and picking some locks will result in people spotting you. This doesn't mean they actually saw you, it just means you didn't crouch. Although if you do crouch and they have a line of sight, there is a chance you will be found out anyway. The space fights are... well, they are neat, kinda. I mean, my view on the spaceship is pretty narrow. I have not managed to build my own spaceship yet. I don't have the right perks for it. So I've been just using the Mantis. Look up the Mantis mission if you are new to the game. Seriously. They just do it. There are times when the bounty hunters ambush you or the pirates. Winning fights in space is weird. Or maybe I'm just bad at it, but honestly the line blurs a lot. Like sometimes I need to relocate the energy from engines or grav drive into weapons, which takes time. If I could freeze time when I do this, that would honestly solve so many problems with the game. And by the time I even get who is the enemy and who is shooting at me, I either killed them already or I need to reload a save. In most fights on the ground, the entire game handles easily, but in space there is zero wiggle room. So if you don't know what to do instantly, you are doomed. And then there is the eternal question of the fast travel and loading screens. This has already been beaten like the dead horse it is, so my take is probably somewhere between lightly annoying and fully expected. There are some areas where I wouldn't expect the game having to load. Like in this day and age, even the consoles this game is made for can handle wide areas, at least wider than Skyrim. There's plenty of times you enter a building or larger area like Neon and you have to go through multiple loading screens, like a lot. Every elevator also serves as a loading screen, but there I feel like that is actually faster than riding a real elevator, so I can forgive that. You will be loading a lot, so make sure you have a fast SSD. Mine is pretty okay, I usually don't wait longer than maybe 4 seconds. It's more the issue of why you actually have to load so often, especially when the game very often makes the player traverse the same three locations and fetch items or complete objectives. The next point I will be making is on the light side. This is more of an observation, so draw your own conclusions. There are four romanceable main characters in Starfield. This segment is more focused on the companionship, but my personal experience was with specifically reaching the maximum relationship status, and so here are my notes. Starfield is speedrunning this part of the game, or more precisely its mechanic, like crazy. And partly I suppose the reason for that is you're not supposed to focus yourself on it too much. Most of the time these relationships only change the demeanor of the given NPC, sometimes resulting in special oriented quests, like you could have in Cyberpunk. I hate to bring this up, but Cyberpunk is also not very relationship focused game and they did way better job at this. To cut it simple and short, in the game you level your relationships up by simply existing and having your companion around you, following you. There are prompts sometimes that you will notice that will address if the follower liked or disliked your behavior or decision, but I found that this almost never mattered, except for extreme circumstances. You need not to focus on actually improving the relationship at all, and if you wait long enough, the choice of serious or romantic relationship will eventually appear. And they are incredibly bland. You can also speed up the entire process by getting the leadership perk, which makes the experience almost jarring. 
since you have a complete stranger fall in love with you in under an hour of gameplay. I have to give props to the economy mechanic in Starfield. This one can be a little confusing at first, but here's the absolute bare bones explanation. You can steal or pick up items that are marked with this yellow icon. This means contraband, which is usually sold in a high value, but is illegal. Now, if you are traveling from one system to another, and that system is under the UC, upon entering that system, the UC will scan you. If they find your contraband, you go in jail, the UC takes your contraband along with any stolen items that you might have on you. You can equip your ship with a secret shielded cargo and also get a perk that helps you evading the scanner. At first, this mechanic makes the game really annoying because you run into contraband fairly often, but most places don't let you sell them, or worse, they don't have enough credits to take them all. I have found a way around this, by the way, uh, travel to Wolf system, dock in Den, there are no scans here and you can sell anything at the local vendor. When he runs out of cash, go to your ship, which is important, you actually have to go to your ship, then go to sleep. My experience is that after about 5 hours of sleep, they have enough credits again. There is the option to also go full on pirate and hold other starships at gunpoint and rob them, or just attack them head on and board them. I haven't done that yet, but once I'm done with the main story, I will report how this works or doesn't. Making credits will become easy with time. Most side quests pay decent enough, and if you get diplomatic perks, you can bargain for more. Pickpocketing is usually working well, especially in early levels, I would personally recommend you, you do that as much as possible. Early on, you will not have a lot of money, and you can pickpocket most non-common NPCs for around 1000 credits, which is huge. Later on though, when you have about half a million, pickpocketing just creates the risk of getting caught, unless you want to steal a specific item like an access card. Weapons as a topic will be brief. I don't think going into a detail on every single gun is even possible right now, but the general opinion I have is as follows. I hate the fact you don't get to main a single gun, and I totally understand why Bethesda did it this way. I had used about 70 gun types in my 50 hours of gameplay. I had my favorites and I never managed to stick with any of them. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the most annoying one is the ammo types. There is a lot of them. Feel free to look up how many, but I can say it's at least 10. There is an entire category for non-lethal firearms too. Ammo has no weight, so you can just pick it up every time, but most enemies will be soaking ammo like crazy. So far, the game has showed two sides of combat to me. Either my weapon one-shots everybody, or it takes about 30 seconds and 4 reloads to kill one. This issue stems from level imbalance, and this will be issued throughout your gameplay. Starfield struggles to find a balance in combat, but you will also realize that this game is not actually giving a shit. <laughs> it is not poorly designed, if you are fighting an enemy that takes an hour, you are probably not supposed to be fighting them. Which I have mixed feelings about, but from the gameplay perspective it makes sense. There is a certain pace that open world games need to force out in order to make the experience consistent. If you could just look up the strongest gear in the game and go to that place on level 1, then the entire game will become boring. There are no restrictions on what you can use, items have no levels, only rarity. So it is up to the enemies to balance that out. There's many many weapons, even iconic ones you can display on your ship, as well as gear. Little bit of note about the ammo variety. You will need to pick up everything and also put at least 5 weapons with different ammo type into the quick access. Otherwise it will make your combat look a bit clunky and resemble turn based JRPGs in pacing. I could probably go on about other aspects of the game like the exploration, shipbuilding, outposts and the many planets you can explore and survey. Today though this seems like a decent stopping point. There's plenty of things to do still, even after 50 hours. I haven't really dug deep into the main story, although it already seems interesting. 
I think you can tell very well how far along you are in the game based on the amount of systems that you have explored already. Since the game cleverly doesn't let you jump just anywhere, especially if the system is far higher in level. I have been reading a lot of comments about Starfield, praise and criticism, and I do think many people take for granted the achievement that is Starfield. While the game is not perfect at all, it's far more finished than I've expected, and I will be giving reports on my progress soon again.